Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm here to present on behalf of my student, uh, Sibin, Sibin Lee. Um, he finished his uh, PhD and is working as an academic in his hometown in China, so he couldn't come. So, um, if there is uh, some questions that I may not be able to answer, I apologize in advance. Now, um, this is about existing buildings, how to strengthen existing buildings um, with carbon fiber. So we are going to leave the GFRP bars on the side for the next 20 minutes. And we are going back to the very first application of FRP for existing buildings, confinement of columns. You would say, again, confinement of columns? We've been doing this for 30 years. We should know how to do it. And most of the times we do. Um, but the reality is in buildings, in real projects, very often we don't have access to the whole columns for whatever reason. We may have infill walls, uh, clay brick or, or uh, cinder blocks. We may have the envelope of the building and removing the windows is very expensive. So we may not be able to grab the column completely. Um, in that case, uh, we are going to have a wall there or maybe on both sides and we cannot fully grab the column to comply, complete the confinement. Another case is if we are going to um, confine the boundary region of a wall in a seismic environment because the boundary region is exploding, um, we cannot do that because we have the wall itself, the, pen, the, the web of the wall itself. This was the motivation for this research and we tested a few walls as well but um, the paper on that has just been finished a couple of days ago. I'm presenting about the work that we did to reach to that point where we could test walls. Um, so just to clarify, we are using FRP sheets, um, wet layout with FRP anchors, bundle of anchors, we all know what FRP anchors are by now. Two types of confinement, confinement type A, where only one side of the column is blocked, and confinement type B with both sides being blocked. Um, and then for columns, so, uh, sorry, for walls, we can use either confinement type A, like in this case, or if the wall is also blocked in here, we can use confinement type B. So both types apply for walls, depending on the type of uh, building, type of structure that we have. So we did a whole bunch of, Sibin did a whole bunch of uh, prisms, about 75, uh, different configurations. I will uh, very briefly introduce the, those in a second. What I want to highlight in here is how the stress strain response of the prisms change. So blue is unconfined, very brittle, it's normal concrete, nothing strange here. These prisms are unreinforced, by the way, and then depending on the spacing of the anchors, how far those anchors are from each other, the response changes. So with 90 millimeters, about three and a half inches, is the best uh, performance that we have in pink, which in hindsight, hindsight is a beautiful thing, right? Makes a lot of sense because it's just like stirrups. We are making stirrups out of FRP, is all we are doing. Uh, which is frustrating when Sibin has to spend so many hours in the lab, no? Uh, and then in green, we have them 120 millimeters apart, about five inches. We still have very good response, a little bit less ductile, le less, a little bit more brittle. And then orange is getting close to the unconfined uh, because it's quite far, the anchors are quite far apart from each other. Again, it's like stirrups. If you put the stirrups too far apart, the whole thing collapses. Same thing. Now, uh, this is a one picture summary of the whole testing program. We have published two papers on this. Um, so you can get all the details in there. Remember to cite them. And we have confinement type A, type B, anchor spacing 90, 120, 180 millimeters, three anchor sizes to see how the diameter of the stirrup is changing the response. And then a square here on the bottom, square and rectangular prisms. We used DIC to understand what was happening there. And they are relatively small, I have to admit, relatively small prisms. 
150 by 150, 200 by 150, and 360 uh, height. So they are relatively small, which is uh, one important limitation, I think. But at the end of the day, shipping was only one person. Now, um, after doing all of these tests, he started to think, okay, how we can um, develop a um, design method that engineers can use to know how to obtain those stress strain curves based on the number of fibers in the u grab and the size and spacing of the anchors. The first thing is failure modes. We want to prevent brittle failure modes. That's the whole idea, right? So we have some equations, and again, this is a, a small detail. The full details are on the paper. So we have equations to prevent a rupture of the anchors, to prevent the bonding of the anchors, to prevent con concrete failure. At the end of the day, we want the fabric to fail first and eliminate all other failure modes. That's going to be the most uh, robust. Um, <clears throat> so we did the testing. This is what I'm going to talk about today, how we develop, how we design that curve. And then hopefully at some point, if this is uh, making sense at some point, including it in the uh, guidelines um, for design. Uh, I think in the current state, this is too complex, and we need to have it in a more um, attractive format. But anyway, that's next steps. Um, looking behind all the equations is not that complex. It's just confinement, the same as we have for normal concrete. We need to find the stress at peak, we need to find the stress at failure, and then the strain at those two points. The equations probably look similar. We have the unconfined <coughs> stress and strain. We have K123 or kappa 1, 2, 3, 4. They are the numbers, the variables that we can adjust. And then we have the XM and XG. These are the new um, variables that have been introduced. Now, they depend on, but well they are based on these papers, and they depend on <laughs> the confinement pressure and the shape factor. And these are the numbers, um, the coefficients that we can change. Now, where are these shape factors coming from? The confinement. When we have stirrups, normal concrete steel stirrups, we know we have these shapes like this, uh, similar to what we have there on the top left. And only the core is confined, right? And looking from the top, we have this shape with parabolas, parabolic shapes, that only the core is confined. So it's basically an extension on that, of that. When we have the anchors, that is confined, that corner is not. When we have anchors on both sides, that is confined, those corners are not. So after months of thinking about this and working through this, he came up with the shape factors that we can input on the equations, and we can obtain the curves. So even though there are way too many equations, and Kent and I battled with this for months, with Victor, with Sivin, um, the, the theory behind is not that different to what we already have. It's not that complex. And the numbers look very good. We have an R square value of 0 0.95, 0 0.97, very, very high, but that makes sense because we are predicting our own data. So I guess what I'm trying to say here is we need more tests, um, especially bigger prisms, because you know 150 is nothing. Six inches is nothing. Um, but I think it's looking good. And from here, we can move to more prescriptive uh, design method that is going to be more palatable for ACI and engineers. Um, then uh, she's been made two design examples. Obviously, I don't want you to read through all of that. Um, but I think these are very useful to understand how the whole thing works in a real environment. So these are kind of a part B or a continuation of the design examples that ACI 440 already has in the documents. It's basically a column, but now we have a little wall there, and we cannot fully grab it. So he goes through all the process of how many sheets we need there, six and how, many, how far the anchors need to be, 
120 millimeters and how big they need to be, uh, 18 millimeters diameter. So about five inches apart and three quarter of an inch um, diameter. Um, it's all there in the paper, again, if you want to read in more detail. The second one, which is our motivation, where we started this problem, we have in New Zealand uh, very thin walls, only six inches uh, thick, with one layer of reinforcement. So at 1% lateral drift, the whole uh, boundary region blows out because there is no confinement, the bar buckles, and the building collapses at 1%, 1.5% 1, 1 drift. So it's a big problem. Um, we propose, okay, let's confine that concrete so it cannot fall down and the bar cannot buckle. But then we run into the problem of, well, what happens in here? We need to stitch that confinement. And what happens if we have uh, some infill wall? These walls are basement foundation walls. So there is often something that prevents fully grabbing the column, the wall. Um, so we came up, Zibin came up with this um, configuration, and then it's just section analysis in nothing else than, th than that. We know that here's response 2000, in fact. We know this for 20 years, more. The only thing we need to do is ensure that that strain there is higher than the crushing strain. That's all we need to do. So then we go back to the stretch strain curves. We design the confinement, the anchors, we reach that point. Um, the, like I said um, at the beginning, this paper is going to be submitted soon, in the next few days. So hopefully it will be published in a few months. But the results are, I was surprised myself. We got all the way to four, four and a half percent drift and the wall was fine, no damage on the concrete. So as a summary, um, we have this model to define the stress strain curves with two parabolic shapes, one until peak, one post peak, is based on 75 prisms, which is, I think, a decent database, but we only have small prisms, so we need to do more tests. Um, we have these two design examples, which are based on existing design examples from ACI, so I think it's very valuable to understand uh, this um, part B. And then, um, Zibin has been working really hard to create a software based on Response 2000, but not quite, that uh, can implement these new stress strain curves into the uh, confined areas, into the boundary regions, and then give us the um, backbone curves of the wall or column. And then perhaps uh, this can find its way into the ACI documents. Uh, and that's it. Uh, Shibin has been quite insistent that he's very happy to collaborate with people. He's a new staff member in China in his hometown. And he has a huge lab and a lot of energy and no kids. So <laughs> he's very happy to work with anyone. Thank you. <laughs>